Are you noticing a pattern here? The pattern is this. You end, up with a, you end up with some symptoms. It gets diagnosed in a certain way, like brain disease, a neurology disease, seizures in the brain, headache in the brain. But the cause is someplace else in the system. You can appreciate that a little better after the way we talked about anatomy and physiology this morning, how everything's connected and these you know, things get out of coordination with each other, and that's more often than not the cause of disease. Psoriasis is another one of these syndromes where it ends up in one place, but you have to trace it like a chain reaction. You tra trace it right back to the physiology to somewhere else in the body. And so in, in Casey's uh, readings, most often, most cases of psoriasis, the problem, he said, was the thinning of the walls of the intestinal system, which allows the escaping of poison. That's the leaky gut syndrome that I mentioned this morning, leaky gut syndrome. And it's as basic as that. He would actually, we, there are a number of studies that have looked at this. Leaky gut is actually fairly, is a fairly hot item now. And alternative medicine for all, ex, ex, this, is the, this is the type of reading where I talked about comorbidity. I said the toxins leak out of the gut and depending on where they settle, they can produce all the different things. Well, that's in the medical literature, that's what they're finding. Now we did find a couple of studies where they actually looked at this. These are mainstream a dermatologist now, not, these are not even alternative. We tend to find it more in Europe than the U.S., so they're a lot more open to these sort of things. The, and what they did was they looked at psoriasis patients and sort of normal people without skin disease or bowel disease, and they found a strong correlation with the degree when, they, when the uh, psoriasis patients swallowed a substance containing a, a kind of a radioactive tracer, a very mild radioactive tracer, so they could tell whether this stuff is leaking through the gut and ending up in the urine. So they examine the urine and, and normal people, very little of this stuff would get through the gut because it's a fairly large molecule, normally wouldn't get through the gut, wouldn't be absorbed, it should pass right on through. But people with leaky gut syndrome or increased intestinal permeability is the technical term, they will find more of this in the, uh, in the urine because it's, that's one of the eliminating channels that came through and the system's trying to get rid of it, right? Maybe some of it would even show up in the skin, who knows? I don't know if they even tested the skin to see if it was showing up there. That would be interesting, wouldn't it, as a channel of elimination? And so the Humbert uh, et al. study was one of those ones that was significant that way. So it's in the mainstream literature, even with psoriasis. We did a, a, we did a, a version of this with the two studies that we did, the two pilot studies where we used the lactulose mannitol um, test. And lactulose mannitol are two <coughs> sugar molecules, a large one and a small one. And so we look at the ratio of that shows up in the urine. If you have a healthy gut, very little of the large molecule should get through. The, the small one should get through just fine. So that tells you how, if you're absorbing okay. Uh, but the large one shouldn't get through. And if you see a high, a high ratio of that with the large to the small, then you say the person has leaky gut syndrome. And this is a Great Smokies lab, which is a, this is a lot easier to do than working with radioactive substances, by the way. And uh, we did tend to find a, a relation there. And we've submitted an article to a peer-reviewed journal and we're in the review process on that to try to get that result published. Some of the standard treatments for uh, psoriasis, the herbal teas, the, leaky, the uh, yellow saffron, and the slippery elm are two most common, but he sometimes recommended mullein, sometimes chamomile, some different things. And uh, one thing I don't have up there, he would recommend small doses of olive oil sometimes. And that's a fascinating piece of physiology there, small doses of olive oil half a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon, or even less, two or three or four times a day, maybe every couple hours, but they had to be a small amount. Does anybody know why? It had to be a small amount of olive oil. Somebody cheated, you've heard my talk before, yeah, okay. The, the reason is, see it's a fat, olive oil is a fat. And um, he said it's a food for the intestinal tract, it's a food, it was, and it will help coat the intestinal tract and feed and nourish the intestinal tract and help it to heal. But if you take large amounts of it, what happens when it goes through the digestive tract? Through the stomach, into the small intestine, and when you get a lot of fats coming in the small intestine, what happens? It says the bile, you know, the, the uh, gallbladder, pump in some bile, emulsify this fat. We got fat coming through here, you, can, you know, and so you got the uh, large amount of fat, the bile comes in, emulsifies it. It's not able to do its job and coat the intestines and feed the intestines because it's broken down with the bile. But if you take small amounts and sort of slip it through there, 
under the radar screen, so to speak, and so it's, it, you get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and the bile, the system doesn't tell the bile. So Casey would say, you get a gastric reaction without an intestinal reaction. In other words, the stomach knows it's there when it comes through, but the intestinal tract doesn't even know it's there. It slipped right in there, and it coats the intestines and helps it to heal. Small amounts of olive oil. And he would recommend that for a number of different things, and even with uh, diarrhea and so forth. But it had to be a small amount. You see why? Isn't that a sophisticated way of thinking of physiology of the intestinal tract? Okay. The manual therapy, sometimes it was a uh, spinal subluxation. And part of the formula that Casey gave included right thinking. I don't know if I included that quote, but when the guy asked, is there a cure for psoriasis? He says, mostly in diet, but also in right thinking. So the attitudinal, the mental part of how you look at yourself. Do you look at yourself as having the possibility of being healed? Or are you just a victim that this has happened to me and there's nothing I can do about it? The expectation to be healed, that sort of thing. That's what he's talking about, the right attitude. That you're going to do whatever it takes to stick with this diet. The lady with the migraine a while ago didn't have the right attitude, not the right thinking. Where it's, you know, I know it's causing my, I know the connection, I know it's causing it, but I just can't change my mind or I can't change my behaviors. That's, that's the opposite of right thinking, see? So we want right thinking with, with psoriasis and everything else we do. And of course, you're familiar with Pagana's book and all of that. And we've, we've published uh, in Venture Inward, I think, at least one article on some of the psoriasis programs we've done. So you can read about that if you like. This is an extensive review. This is over 100 citations. I got this published in, in uh, Integrative Medicine, Andrew Weil's uh, journal on the systemic aspects of psoriasis and an integrative model based on intestinal etiology. So if you want the, the deeper cut on this, I'm skimming across the surface of it, but if you really want to understand what's going on here with auto intoxication, the immune system and so forth, this will give it to you. This is, I just submitted um, a large part of this to the National Psoriasis Foundation for a grant application uh, last week looking at leaky gut and psoriasis. So we'll see how it goes. We did get an announcement for it, a paper announcement, and we've never done anything with them. So how we got on their list to get a, a paper announcement for psoriasis research, because we're not, we don't have a dermatologist or anybody on board. Uh, somebody, there's, somehow we got on their radar screen as, and I think it might be because of Pagano presented at their last international conference and they had standing room only at his two presentations. So I think uh, somebody there is paying attention to the Casey leaky gut model and Pagano, they're interested in Pagano and they got a hold of this paper probably, or Pagano may have given them this paper and they may say, well, let's send those guys a, uh, let them know that we're going to provide some grant money. Now, whether we get it or not, we're, our model doesn't fit the categories of what they're looking for. They're not looking for intestinal kind of things. They're looking for genetics, the immune system, and so forth. They have strict categories that they think is what's causing psoriasis. Well, we didn't fit into their categories very nicely, but we thought, what the heck? You send them the best that we have, and if they read it, at least we'll educate them a little bit. Maybe next year they'll include a category for digestive or alternative medicine approaches to psoriasis. 